So this happened to be a school where this eighth grade teacher was using our culture model, which is called a responsibility-based culture model. And she was holding regular weekly classroom meetings. And because she was the only one doing this model, she needed extra support because she needed to know, how do I transfer responsibility to these eighth graders? Because that's the whole gist of this emotionally intelligent culture model. So into the classroom meeting that I was sitting in on, An eighth grade boy comes in and he says, I want to add something to our classroom meeting agenda. And he says, I'm being bullied by my homeroom teacher. So when it came his turn to share his agenda item, this is what he said. He said, we just were given this new pledge to do in the morning along with the Pledge of Allegiance and things like that. And he said, we're asked to put our hand on our heart and say, I pledge to use my words and actions for peace. So it sounds kind of like a good tool. The problem was the homeroom teacher pointed at them harshly and said, if, if I catch any of you not doing this pledge, you're going to get a detention. And so this kid was angry about that. And he wanted to know how to deal with this teacher putting all this pressure on the kids to have to do this pledge or else. And so the teacher in this class meeting said, Judy, would you kind of help me with this one? So I asked the boy, I said, do you want peace in the school? Because you're bringing up this issue of bullying and peace and this pledge. And he said, well, yeah, I do want peace. And I said, do you want peace with that teacher? And he said, yeah, I do. And I said, well, good, then I can help you because I know what you want. So are you willing to look at where you're doing war? And he said, me, how am I doing war? She's the one bullying me. And I said, that's true. And she's not here. She's not the one asking for help. So if you want peace, are you willing to look at where you're doing war? And he said, okay, I guess. And I said, do you ever say bad things about her behind her back? And he said, well, yeah, I hate her. And I said, huh, wonder if there's anything war-like about hate and gossip And he said, okay, you know, and I said, do you ever try to go to her and work out your problems with her? And he said, well, no, I'm afraid of her. We're all afraid of her. And I asked him, I said, do you know that fear of another person is attack? And he said, no, what do you mean by that? And I said, if a dog came charging up to you and it was barking and it was baring its teeth and it was very hostile, if you get more afraid, does that dog get more hostile or less hostile? And he said, well, the dog would get more hostile. And I said, you're right. Why? And he said, I don't know. I've really not thought about that. And I said, the dog gets more hostile because when you're afraid of someone or even some creature, you are in that place of I'm afraid of you because you're a bad person, you're the enemy, you're in the monster box, and by that very nature of holding them that way, they will return the favor, and you are in mutual hostility. And he said, well, I really didn't know that being afraid was doing war. And I said, well, nobody's probably told you that, so now that you know, what do you want to do? And he said, well, what I really want to do is I want to go talk to her, but I don't really know how to do it. And I said, well, that's a great place to be because you got 20 students in here, you got a teacher and you even have a coach. What do you think about brainstorming with your classmates about how you can help each other to figure this out? And what was really cool is that some of the other kids in the classroom said to him, hey, I'll go with you because I've been doing war too and I didn't even realize I was. And so that was pretty amazing to see the kids start to jump on the bandwagon about taking responsibility for that situation. What did I ask the boy first? I asked him if he wanted peace. So the first question you always want to ask people is, what do you want? Because when they start to say what they want, then you can help them get there. But if you start telling them what they should want, they haven't really bought into what they want. One of the things that I want you to see is that You could bring a really beautiful tool to your workplace or your organization, and it could be as great as a peace pledge or greater, but if you bring it in on top of a really autocratic kind of controlling model, it's going to backfire on you. And that's what a lot of organizations do. They try to piecemeal in things in hopes that everybody will show up more responsible and more helpful. And often they don't because we're putting it on top of some practices that have really been part of the problem all along. So some of the things that were really important is that some adults would have treated an eighth grader 
in such a way that they would have said, you poor thing, you're right, that teacher's a bully, you shouldn't have to be bullied, we're going to go and get her in trouble. And that wouldn't have helped him become a person that shifted out of feeling like a victim. And it wouldn't have helped him become a person that looked at his part. And it wouldn't have helped him to become the person who is under the authority figure, but was going to take a large role in resolving a problem with the authority figure, which is absolutely essential for this person to become a good authority figure himself. So part of what the emotional intelligence is, is an ability to use your power in a different, more constructive way. And by one person holding that responsibility, everyone's responsibility level has a greater chance of rising with it. 